Nobody is safe in the world of power, we've seen key characters being killed off in ruthless ways and in more ways than one and I expect them to continue with the trend in the last half of book 2's first season so in this video I'm talking all about death predictions, who could kill who and what to expect in the last half of the season so welcome back to MovieBot and let's talk about death predictions. So just another little throwback moment for you guys, season 6 episode 4 when Tommy and Ghost were off full on war with each other, not gonna lie it was crazy but it was hard to watch at the same time considering Ghost and Tommy were brothers. But anyways, Power Book 2 Ghost is 4 days away, the countdown is well and truly on, just 4 days and we'll finally have power back on our screens on Sundays. I'm excited, I can't wait because this last half of the season is gonna be good, especially now that we know what the episode titles are, it gives us a little bit more insight into what the episodes could mean and when we could see these deaths and I said at the start of the video that nobody is safe in the world of power but before I get into death predictions if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already then remember to smash the subscribe button. But let's talk about death predictions and let's start with the Tejada family and I'm going to kick this off by talking about Lorenzo and Monet and their situation is one to keep an eye on because we've already seen him tell her that he doesn't like the way she's running things on the outside and what Lorenzo doesn't know is that Monet is slowly losing grip on the control over her people. We've seen Drew and Diana become a little distracted and I'm sure we'll see Kane rebel at some point. And with Lorenzo and Monet, I just feel there's something there, something that's not quite right there. Could Monet have set Lorenzo up to go to prison? We all know why he's in there. But could she have pulled a manoeuvre like Ghost and Tasha did with Kanan? It's just one to think about. And the thing is with Lorenzo's character, I actually do want to see more of him. I think he's got the potential to be such a good character, a feared character, if he was given more screen time and if he wasn't sitting behind bars. But I don't know if they're going to do that or go in that direction. I personally think that Monet will have Lorenzo killed and make it look like an accident or she wasn't involved. And the reason being because Lorenzo is her protection. We've heard her telling Ramirez, you know what Lorenzo's name gets me in these streets. So without Lorenzo, she loses her protection, but not if it's an accident, not if she makes it look like she wasn't involved in the killing, but not before he probably finds out that Monet is smashing Ramirez because I'm sure that's bound to come out in the open and I'm sure Kane knows already. I mean, he's not the smartest, but I'm sure he knows. And maybe Lorenzo could find out and order the hit on Ramirez. I think both Lorenzo and Ramirez's time could be up. And as I said, if Monet was to get rid of Lorenzo, she needs to be smart with that kill. Now, considering I'm on the topic of Monet, let's talk about another couple of people that could well be her first kill who it could be because everybody seems to be convinced that she's killing someone here. I'm not too sure, I still think she's using it as a scare tactic but her first kill Lil Guap who I think is a dead man walking anyway regardless. I think if Monet doesn't kill him then someone will no doubt but I don't want to go into too much on detail on Lil Guap because I did a full mid-season trailer breakdown analysis on his role in the second half of the season so I'll link the video down below. And what about Jabari? This is the one I want to see. I want to see his death. I really hope they give it to us. Monet could kill him for example if he was to hurt Zeke and he finds out that he's been sleeping with Kari. Or Monet could even just kill Kari straight up if Zeke makes her pregnant. There's actually so many different ways they could go with Monet's first on-screen kill. And there's also Drew's character description which mentioned a deadly consequence and I'm wondering if the deadly consequence could relate to Ev. Could he be forced to show his loyalty and have him kill his own boyfriend? I think Drew's character is really one to watch in this second half of the season. I think he could really turn dark. And what about Kane? Now one man I expect to catch bodies in the last half of the season is Kane. They kicked off Power Book 2 Ghost with him catching a body in the very first episode then followed it up in the second with Uncle Frank. So I actually think they could even kick off the second half of the season with a body dropping and with regards to Kane's character We've seen that he's going to be taking Brayden under his wing and we're yet to see the fallout from Brayden's brother Trey stealing the stash of pills. So could Kane kill Trace or could Brayden kill Trace? I'm going to come to the brotherly killing theme in just a moment but Kane, he's going to lose control at some point and no doubt he's going to go on a rampage and defy Monet's orders. So he's one character who I expect to catch a body or two, no doubt. It's just a matter of who. But let's talk about this brotherly killing theme because I mentioned it a while ago in uh, one of my videos if some of you guys remember. Power had a father and son killing theme with Ghost and Tariq, Tommy and Tony Teresi, Sean and Kanan and I really wouldn't be surprised to see something like this continue. I can't see someone like Monet killing any of her kids just yet 
there would have to be a crazy twist and something unforeseen for that to happen. But I do think a brotherly killing theme, or one I hope anyway, Trace Weston. He was one character we saw nothing in the mid-season trailer or the subsequent small teasers or clips that they've been dropping on Instagram if you've noticed. They've shown us little bits of Riley, Cooper Sacks, but nothing of Trace and considering he stole a stash of pills at the end of episode 5, they haven't shown anything or any repercussions, but there will be and I think he's one that could definitely catch a bullet and I really hope it's Brayden. Because in yesterday's video where I spoke about monster, I spoke about how power will create many monsters, not just one. I don't think Tariq or Kane or if Tommy, if he comes back, they're the only monsters. I think Brayden teaming up with Kane could well put him on the path on becoming a monster too. All he needs is his first kill to turn him into one and what better way to do it than your own brother for stealing the stash of pills and showing your loyalty to Kane because Kane will test Brayden. He's gonna test him in more ways than one and this is something I think we'll see in episode 6. Kane and Brayden's team up is what I'm really looking forward to seeing in episode 6. But what about Riley because this is another character who I don't have a good feeling about and mainly because she's Sax's niece and whatever Sax touches is cursed. He will really regret getting Riley to spy on Tariq because she's actually protecting Brayden from what we saw in the episode 6 trailer and I'm actually wondering whether she could be a good addition to Tariq and Brayden's team because she seems like someone who's very money hungry. I mean, if Tariq throws her a bit of cash maybe her way, that could actually be enough to make her turn on Cooper Sacks. But at this moment in time, I'm leaning more towards her being killed by Brayden or Kane or Monet. I don't think Tariq would get his hands dirty with this one. And well, talking about Cooper Sacks, what about him getting his first on-screen kill? Does Cooper Sacks have the balls to kill? I referenced this image when I spoke about Cooper Sacks after episode 5, the mid-season finale, and how we've never seen Cooper Sacks wear these gloves ever I don't think, and I'm just wondering whether there is a foreshadow to him actually getting his hands dirty for the first time. For example with Tomika if she was to go up on the stand, or Blanca Rodriguez because they can really blow the lid on Cooper Sacks. I want to see Cooper Sacks getting his hands dirty and I actually want to see him if he's got the balls to kill someone and I actually can imagine him. I can see him strangling Tomiko or Blanca Rodriguez in rage and although I like Tomiko's character on power, I actually do like her character. I don't think she's a big of a loss on the show and the same goes for Blanca Rodriguez as well. I don't think she'd be a big of a loss either. So I think either one of those two could go or even maybe both. And what about Sacks himself? This is one guy who really does have 9 lives and Ghost and Tommy should have dealt with him back in season 6 episode 8. Let me play the short clip for you. If something tells me you're not done putting him through more shit. The fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> Angela Proctor, who's next? You are, asshole. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy. And now you owe me for saving your fucking life, Sax. Stay the fuck. So Sax, he's definitely lucky to still be breathing and he still owes Ghost. So is this one of the reasons why he could flip on the deal with Davis McLean? And well, I've already spoken about my death predictions for Tommy, Tariq and Tasha. So I won't be going into their storylines because I've already spoken about them already. But I'd want to know what your death predictions are. Let me know what your death predictions are. Who could kill who and why? So drop me your thoughts down below in the comment section. And if you have any crazy theories, I want to hear them. And it's just four days left, guys, for episode six. So if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, remember to smash the subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.